Alright, here we go. Like I want you to start slipping. not tight end. Now, what? somebody tell me the difference between where we are last week compared to where we are this week. What's the difference? Nothing. We win, we get, we don't lose by three. You do anything different? Does this game mean anything different? Do you approach it any different? Does it change our season substantially? No. God, everybody's acting like on the outside, and it, I know it filters down, like the f-ing world's come to an end because we lost a three-point game. They're shut. Well, last year you did. You know where we were last year after four games? Two and two. Okay. Well, the defense didn't do that. You know how many points we gave up last year on defense after four games? 84. You know how many you've given up now? 80. Right? Perception versus reality. Well, you got, you're not going to have your swagger? Are you kidding me? Us? You have one bad game, all of a sudden that's gone? That's because they don't understand, guys. That's because they don't understand. No, we're not where exactly we wanted to be. We wanted to come into this thing, get this going to buy four and one. But you know what? We're not. We're not. But everything's still sitting out there in front of us. We got to take a little bit different route to get to that division championship, to go to the playoffs, to have a bye, and to go to a Super Bowl. That's all. Nothing's changed. And you and you got to have that same attitude. I don't give a rat's ass. You've, defense, you've been hearing it on the offensive side for a while, and now you got to live it. I don't give a rat's ass where we rank offensively in passing, as long as we're winning, right? As long as it's a combination of win. I don't give a rat's ass where we're ranked defensively. I really don't. Because you know what? Don't get any points for it. And nobody here gets any money for it. Right? All at the end of the day, it's how do you produce? What's the score? What's the score at the end of the day? Do we get where we want to go? And they can all down their pants and decide that this means that, and that's because they don't know. All right? That ought to half piss you off. This is a team. Now, what's the difference between Washington and Kansas City? Kansas City's one and three, and they're feeling like they're ready to go to the Super Bowl. Washington's one and three, but they won the one back to the beginning of the season. They lost three in a row, and now Joe Gibbs can't coach. Bullshit. Man's got three Super Bowls. Nothing has changed. Not the way we prepare, not the focus, not the confidence, not the swagger. You gonna quit dancing? Huh? One game, you gonna quit dancing? Hell no. And I'm still the, I'm always gonna be an arrogant. You don't have to worry about that. So we're not backing off. We had a setback. A three point setback. Honestly, it should have been a damn rat killer, but you wouldn't blink. And it was a three. How many did we lose to him last year? Seven. What's the difference? Nothing. A loss is a loss. A win's a win. We're two and two. We're going to get to three and two. And we're going to come out and get everything we want. But it doesn't just happen. Okay? Get a good break. Still got to work on that language. <laughs> it's coming. Not really. Yeah, yeah. I'm working yeah, on it. You have some weeks that are better. I'm now. working on it. Damn. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to call your mom, and I'll see if I can get her. Yeah, no, she, I think she's, I've given up on her <laughs> not smoking, and she's given up on me not swearing. <laughs> not anymore. Here. <laughs> I can take care of that real quick. The man is definitely good. We'll see how that pep talk worked, if it worked or not. And we're joined by Brian Billick next in the studio. Stick around. Ravens Wired continues. Get the ball! Get the ball! Get the ball! Welcome back to Ravens Wired, everybody. The Ravens had a short week of practice after playing on Monday Night Football. Just five days to get ready for the Redskins. We're joined now by Ravens head coach Brian Billick. Thanks for being here with us. Uh, we saw your clip and we saw your pep talk. You're good. You had me wanting to tackle, to tackle <laughs> some people after that speech. Is that a hard thing to do to turn around a team that's down? Uh, it, it depends on the team and not with this team. You know, this team's been together for a while and, and they've heard about every speech that I have to give. Uh, but all you can really do as a coach as you progress through the week is try to bring some key focus to try to hit as best you can the high points of what you think they're thinking about, what's important so that they keep a focus on what's important. And, and for those guys last week, it was a tough week after a tough emotional loss to uh, Kansas City where we just didn't play very well and, and would like to have played better for the national audience. You knew it had to be you know, running around, running, running around in their head just a little bit. And I wanted to kind of just kind of jolt them a little bit to say, let's keep in mind what that was. You don't have time to feel sorry about it. It was what it was. Let's get ready for the Redskins. In a way, you were bringing them back to reality, and you talked a lot about perception versus reality. 
as pro football players, a lot of influence is going on from the outside world. Is it easy for them to lose their focus on what's real and what's not? It can be. Players and coaches like will tell you, well, I don't listen to it. I don't hear it. And then we're all lying. You, you can't help. You turn on the car radio, you pick up a paper, you turn on the TV. There's all this noise around this game. And it's great. It's, it's excitement. It's great for the fans. It's a way for everybody to, to, to be drawn into it. But uh, at the end of the day, it does tend to be noise. And noise can be uh, distracting. And you try to help the players cut through that noise and stay focused on what they have to do. All right. Let's see if they got back on track, the, see if the motivation worked. Let's go out to Ravens Wired. Come on, open and drive, just like we've been doing. Just like we've been doing. Set us up now, set us up. Come on, come on, that's not us. That's not, we gotta get started with the running game. All right, D, come on now, do your thing, D. Get to him, get to him. Out of baby, out of baby. Nice job, D. center back to throw corner blitzes on throws over the middle Wilcox juggles in it's intercepted you not see the crack seam guy Are you What's feel that? rushed you didn't see Randy down the middle in the crack seam no the corner bail he's off and outside it looked like he was behind him check with Dave he says he saw the corner bail and talking through it because he's not seeing it Snaps, ball spotted, kick up, and the Redskins take a 3 0 lead. Hell of a job! That's a hell of a job! Nice job, D! Nice job! That's what to minimize it. Come on now, come on now, Kyle, get him going! Come on, see what you've seen and throw it now. Now don't just toss it up just because now you haven't seen a couple. Believe what you see and let it go. Two wide receivers to the right side. Bowler throws, and it's picked off. Threw it right to the defender. It off, fakes to Portis. Brunel rolling to his left. Nobody out there. Now some pressure. Throws. It's caught. Touchdown. Come on, we gotta find out what we're made of. They haven't pissed a drop and we give them 10 points. Damn it, we've gotta be better than this. Uh, penalty? No, not inside five minutes. Not inside five minutes in the fourth quarter. Not inside five minutes on the fourth quarter. We'll start this on the ready as soon as this guy's off the field. Why, why do we have that? Why does it make a 
bit of difference. I have no idea. I don't like it. You guys got too many rules. No, hey man, they're making it more complicated. Yeah. But is that is? But what if it's a Monday night versus a Saturday game? But if you're going north as opposed to south, I have no idea. I mean, shouldn't that matter? You know what? I, I think a lot of it has to do with the mood. Yeah. All right, Joe. Thank you. What do I say when I left at halftime? It's all about trust. It's all about trust. Now I got a special game ball. Understood. Special circumstance for one reason. Goes to Jamal Lewis and has to remind him. We're going to be here when he gets back. Yeah. You know what? And when you get back, and when you get back, okay, we're going to be five and two. The Ravens now three and two after that win, and they have those bragging, bragging rights for a few years now. They don't face the Redskins again till 2008. Now, the last thing you talked about was Jamal Lewis. What kind of characters he showed you through this whole ordeal? Well, I, I don't know that anybody can fully appreciate it unless they've been through it. The, the, the type of focus it takes to go about doing your job in a very intense environment like we have in the NFL, dealing with all the circumstances he's dealt with. Uh, he's done this for quite a while, and it's all come to head in the last week or so. Uh, you can imagine all the things that were running around in his mind uh, to then have to prepare to go on the national stage, not just another Sunday game, that's big enough, but to go on a Sunday night game. Uh, when, and at one point during the game or at any point, every camera is going to be on him. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about that circumstance. To show that kind of resiliency, I think, says a lot about Jamal. And he handled it well, struggled a little in the first half, and the second half ran for 97 yards, a good way for him to go out. Uh, good physical, wanted to take the game over, had a chance to, to, to help take the game over offensively. Uh, and, and once he gets going like that, the linemen feed off him, he feeds off the linemen. It's kind of fun to watch. Now, obviously, a big switch from the first half to the second half. What did you say in the locker room? You know, it's really the, the, the motivational things in the locker room are, are overdone. It's really the players uh, trusting one another, mm -hmm. recognizing how we gave them the 10 points and how we could get that back, uh, believing in themselves. And, and, uh, and that's all it really is, is to, again, bring focus to the situation and what it is that you need to get done. Now, you use the word trust a lot, and I think that's interesting because you said in the clip the defense and special teams did their job, and you told the offense, appreciate the trust they have in you and go out and do your job. Why is trust so important? Is it easy to blame uh, the offense or the defense when Absolutely. something's not breaking down? Absolutely. Everything about you, everything about the, the outward circumstances, whether it's fans or media, you know, we're a country that needs a scapegoat. We're, we're a country that needs to say, this is the person responsible. We have to assess blame. And, and it's just inherent in what we do. Uh, and if you allow it to creep into a team environment, then it can destroy you. And it will happen the entire season. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. There's a lot of vested self-interest. How does this apply? Does this apply to me? And a lot of times you have to ask players to uh, forego their personal circumstance for the good of the team, maybe make some of those sacrifices, and, and there has to be trust that you're going to do that. All right, now you guys have the bye week this week, but you don't have a week off. You're getting ready for Buffalo. Do you think you got the right momentum going into Buffalo? What would you like to see from your team? Well, first thing, we need to get our team back. <laughs> we need to get some guys back that have been gone for the last three and four weeks, getting Travis Taylor back, getting Todd Heap back, getting Mike Flynn back, uh, now getting uh, a, what appears to be a very healthy Deion Sanders back, which is a huge plus. Uh, the buys come at a good time for us. Uh, we don't want to lose the momentum, but it's good that we have this time. And, and to try to keep that momentum, obviously at home against Buffalo, we've got to come out with the kind of intensity that we're capable of, uh, and then go on the road against a very good Philadelphia team. All right, we look forward to having all the starters, or some of the starters back. And as you go into Buffalo, thanks a lot for being here with us, Great. Brian. We really appreciate it.